I mean, you can really slam this thing around. These bottles are not coming out, so that is a really a cool design there. The Speedgoat 3 is an incredible waste pack for ultra running with one major flaw. Do all the benefits of the Speedgoat outweigh this one major flaw? The answer is yes, and if you stick around, I'll go into detail about why this is one of the best waste packs for ultra running and why that one major flaw, it may not be so major. As for experience with the Speedgoat, I've used this on many, many, many training runs. I've also used it on the 46 mile Pinellas Trail Challenge, which is on all paved roads. And I also used it on the rugged trails of the Georgia Jewel uh, up in Georgia. And uh, this thing did amazing. Ultra Spire recommends to use this waste pack when aid stations are about 10 miles apart. And I would say that's accurate based off of the amount that you can carry both in the supplies plus in the roughly 38 to 40 ounces that you can hold in the bottles. The construction of the Speed Goat is amazing. The stitching is incredibly strong. The bottle carriers are very rugged and show absolutely no signs of wear after many, many hours and hundreds of miles using this thing. The front pouch did have its logo peel off, but this is a stretchy mesh, so really not a material that is conducive to having a logo. So kind of expected that. Doesn't really affect the form, uh, fit, or function. So not really a gripe on my part. The hooks for the locking mechanism are surprisingly made out of metal. Uh, in an industry where I see more and more plastic designs coming into their belts and vests, it's actually kind of nice to see this really sturdy metal that I know is not going to break. It's going to lock into this little loop that is stitched very strong, so I know this is not going to be the point of failure. This is a strong part, and I'm happy they chose a metal design for that, not a plastic one. The ribbons that tighten the belt are very strong, made out of this non-stretchy mesh. I mean, this stuff is strong. And uh, spoiler alert, they have not worn down even after the many, many times of tightening this thing during my ultras. Great, great choice on whatever material this is. This is awesome. As for features, let's start with this front pocket. This front pocket is spacious, yet still snug. It can fit a Pixel 6 Pro in an OtterBox with some additional gels and some aid. Uh, if you were not carrying a phone or you had a smaller phone, you could absolutely stuff this pocket full of items. But as for me, it fits my large phone just fine with no balance. Next for storage would be this back pocket here. Now this back pocket is also made out of a very stretchy mesh. It can hold a surprisingly large amount of items. Uh, it can hold, I got in here just as an example, a pair of socks. Uh, some doo-doo wipes, of course, uh, a small example aid pack, and it still had room for some more items in here. It's nestled right in between those two bottle carriers. Very smart use of space. Definitely not gonna replace a vest by any means, but it has enough items to get you, like I said, about 10 miles between aid stations. The bottles fit very securely in the back. These things are not coming out. I mean, you can really slam this thing around. These bottles are not coming out, so that is a really uh, cool design there. While the bottles are incredibly hard to remove, I actually found a way to make it very easy. All you have to do is push on the bottle a little bit from the bottom and it pops right out. Uh, no need to reach around and really contort your back. If you just pop it out from the bottom just a little bit, it'll slide right out and you can slide it back in very easy. Finally, we have these little side pockets which are great for storing gels, that's what they're made for. You can't really fit much in there, however you can stretch it wide enough to fit a buff, a bandana, arm sleeves. Really awesome use of space there that they were able to add this little mesh for just that little bit extra storage for those gels so you didn't have to put it in the front pocket or the back pocket. Moving back up to the front pocket, the Speedgoat has these Z-pole attachments. Very quick and easy to get my Z-poles in and out. If you were not carrying Z-poles, you could easily fit a shirt or a jacket, tuck it in here, tighten it up, you'd be good to go. Now we're onto the negatives. In my opinion, the Speedgoat has one major flaw, one minor sizing issue, and one thing to look out for when you first get the Speedgoat and try it on for your runs. The major flaw would have to be the securing method for how they chose to secure these straps. With loaded bottles and when you load this thing up, it's going to come undone within 50 yards, maybe 100 yards if you're lucky, possibly less than that. 
when I have the bottles loaded up and I have this, I had this loaded up for the Pinellas Trail Challenge, every few feet it seemed to be coming loose and I had to tighten it. I don't even, I don't even want to think about how many times it was, it got annoying and there was really no way on the go I could secure these. Now when the bottles are a little emptier and you're holding a bit less, you can go further without it coming loose, but still it was quite annoying. I really had no idea how to fix this. I looked online, people had some ideas. It seemed to be a pretty common criticism. However, after buying a few products, I finally found on Amazon these seat belt securing plastic attachments that I have right here. Uh, they look like this. It was a two pack, I think two for 10 bucks. What that does, I tighten it to where I want to, clamp these things down, and there's absolutely zero movement on this belt now. I've run hundreds of miles since I used this method and it hasn't come undone even once. So it kind of sucks that you have to buy a third party device to make this belt work. Uh, it is a cheap, I mean, it was 10 bucks for two of them. It's cheap, but for the price point for 90 bucks for this item, for the Speedgo 3, you really shouldn't have to go and buy additional products to make it work as intended. The sizing is also very interesting. I'm a 30 inch waist, maybe a 32 if I've had a big lunch. Uh, my hips are average to maybe narrow and I find that I have to tighten this belt up as tight as it will go in order for it to feel comfortable and not bounce around. Now for me, that's fine. It's as tight as it will go, maybe not quite as tight as it will go and it sits on the hips nice and it's fine. I know a lot of people are smaller than me so I do wonder how that fits smaller individuals. Uh, maybe some females with some uh, narrow, narrower waist but with wider hips. It might sit on those hips fine and not bounce around much. But for someone that's slim, very narrow hips, I'd like to see uh, how this would fit them. Finally, something to watch out for is chafing. When I first wore the Speed Goat, I had no shirt on. I actually think I was wearing it a little higher up than I should have. So the tops of these bottles uh, right here were eaten into my back during the run. Didn't notice it, hopped into the shower after my run, and man, I found out. <laughs> uh, what fixed that essentially was just pushing it down a bit on my hips so it would sat, I think where it was meant to be sat, right on the hips. Uh, like I said, I think I had it a little higher than it should have been. Additionally, even when it's on your hips, the tops of the bottle carriers here can rub against your lower back just a little bit. Not enough for those short runs, but for your long runs, for your 15, 20 miles, for your ultras. Uh, that could possibly start wearing into your back a little bit and causing some chafing. Essentially what I just do is I make sure that my pants or my, uh, my compression shorts are pulled up either level or maybe a bit above where the bottle carrier touches my skin. Absolutely fine. Uh, like I said, it sits kind of lower on the hips, so just make sure that your, your pant line or your compression short line is right level or maybe a bit above and you'll experience zero chafing. In a year of using this thing, after the first week, I've experienced zero chafing using this at all. I don't own any of the Ultraspire attachments for the Speed Goat, but the Lumen Ally looks pretty amazing. What the Lumen Ally is, it's a replacement for this front pocket that actually has, a, it looks like a smaller pocket, but you can fit one of their light fixtures in it. Uh, the downside to this is that it does not come with a light. You're gonna have to pay an extra $80, $100 plus for a light that fits in that Lumen Ally. With that being said, you're looking at about 130 bucks, somewhere around there, to add a waist light to your Ultra Spire. If you're someone that absolutely has to have a waist light, I could see this being a good buy. The, the lights that Ultra Spire offers look amazing. However, for 130 bucks, you can get yourself a pretty high-end headlamp. So that's something to consider. If you're someone that's fine with a headlamp, would that $100 or less, would that 50 bucks, 60 bucks on a headlamp be more worth it than 100 bucks plus for a waist light? That's up to you. But for me, uh, I'm gonna hold off on buying the light for now. Do I want one? Absolutely. Is my wife gonna kill me if I purchase it? 100%. <laughs> So who would benefit the most from the Ultra Spire Speed Goat? I'm from Florida, most of my races are in Florida. In the summer, even in the winter, it's hot here. And when I wear a vest, I sweat like crazy. So having a waist pack and either wearing no vest, having a light shirt or no shirt at all, allows me to cool down much easier 
and this is a necessity for some of the races that I run because I just I overheat so easily so if you're a runner in a hot environment and you need a way to cool down you find yourself really sweating in the vest the Speedgoat is the way to go additionally if you're someone that goes on long runs and doesn't want to carry a whole vest this will do the trick for you as well Previously before having this waste pack, I had a much cheaper waste pack on Amazon. It held two 10 ounce bottles. Uh, it was super cheap, but did the job. I found myself wanting to go further and further to areas where there were no water stops. And so I was really looking for a waste pack with high water capacity and looked at some Ospreys, looked at some Camelbacks, but essentially the Ultra Spire just fit all my needs. It had two of these 18 ounce bottles. It had enough pockets to where I didn't have to have an arm attachment for my phone. I could put my phone in that front pocket. The back pocket, I could put some aid items, maybe a change of socks, uh, you know, some snacks. So this really fit the needs for my long run. Additionally, if you're someone that uses a vest and finds yourself just weighed down by tons of items, you might want to go with the Speed Goat. For my recent ultra marathon, the Georgia Jewel, I really had a plan for that race that I wanted to pack lighter and not carry as much stuff. During the Vera Beach Octopus Ultra, my Solomon vest, I picked it up at one point. The thing had to be about six, seven plus pounds, all the sweat, the water, the tailwind, the gels, the batteries, the battery packs, and my legs took a beating, and I believe it was due to just carrying too much stuff. With the Speed Goat, I intended for one, to be able to cool down because Eh, it's Georgia, it's September, might get a little hot, but two, I just wanted to carry less items. And by carrying less items, by not having a vest on, by not sweating, I found that I was much faster, I cooled down better, and I just didn't use the crap that I usually packed. I didn't need all the extra gels, there was enough aid stations, I didn't need all the medical supplies, all the foot care stuff, all the anti-chafing stuff, I just carried a small amount of each of those things, didn't even use them. So if you're someone that wants to just try and go a little bit lighter, I would suggest looking at the Speed Goat. And additionally, for your next Ultra when you're using a vest, really take inventory of all the stuff that you pack in that vest. You might be surprised how little of the stuff you actually use, and maybe a waste pack will do the trick for you. I hate giving out on a scale of one to 10 for products, but if I absolutely had to give a one out of 10 for the Speed Goat, I would give it a nine. Yes. Even with that major flaw that I pointed out over the straps coming undone, I would give it a nine out of 10. And that just speaks to how much I love this product, the versatility of it, and how much of an impact it's brought to my running, whether it be on my long runs, or as I mentioned extensively, the cooling down for my races. Some of the highlights I'd have to point out if you were just jumping to this section would be the incredible construction and build quality it's been through hundreds of miles, still holding up fine. I actually want to buy a spare, but I'm holding off to see if they release the Speed Goat 4 and update that securing mechanism. But uh, I really love this thing. If it ever broke, I would be heartbroken and I'd go out and buy a new one right away. Next would be the storage capacity. As I mentioned, you're not getting nearly as much of a vest, but I think you're getting just as much as you need, especially if you're looking at aid stations that are 10 miles or under. I think this gives you plenty, plenty of capacity for your necessities for those runs. The hydration capacity is also a big plus. In terms of base water storage, two 18 ounce flasks is great, especially when you consider the fact that it doesn't bounce around when it's secured. Uh, absolutely amazing fit. I was bombing down mountains. I was trucking up the mountains and uh, perfect fit bottles. As, as I mentioned, these bottles are not coming out. Overall, if you're like me and overheat easy, I recommend you take a look at the Speedgo 3.0. Uh, additionally, I challenge you on your next Ultra, if you're wearing a vest, to really take inventory of all the items that you store in the pockets, in the back, in the sides, and see how much of those items you really use. Uh, I think you'd be surprised over how much of the stuff that you pack in your vest that you don't actually use over the course of your Ultra, and eh, maybe the smaller storage capacity of a waste pack may just suit your needs. As always, thanks for watching, and I cannot wait to see you do something amazing. I'm so happy this is over. I am getting torn up by mosquitoes. Oh my gosh. The things I do to get some good footage. Plus my house is an absolute mess. Ugh.